Hi. I'm a marine biologist. So when I think of colors, the first thing that comes to my mind is the underwater world, full of corals, sponges, red, brown, green algae, colorful fishes, crabs. The second thing that comes to my mind is India, full of colors, diverse, rich, vibrant. But does the outer color really matter? What about our minds? I may be wearing black, but my mind can be the most colorful. I believe it's the attitude we have towards life colors our mind. This is part of a quote from Kristen Rogers, which says, we are all artists painting our lives upon the canvas of reality. Mix the colors your own way and apply emotions liberally. Bottom line is, everything boils down to us, how we want to color our mind. I did my PhD in Germany, in fact, in Kiel. So happy to be at my alma mater. But standing here today was not easy for me. What may seem normal or obvious to most of you is a dream for most of us. Let me take you to a journey, a journey that changed my life, colored my mind with resilience. I finished my master's and got interested in a very specialized field, marine chemical ecology. It was not possible to pursue it in India. The field was not developed. I wanted to do my PhD in Europe. US seemed quite far and expensive. And if in Europe, I think no other place better than Geomar, it's the mecca of marine science. I belong to a middle class family and my father did not have the money to fund my stay abroad. So applying for fellowships was the only possible way for me. I applied for the first time and failed horribly. I was frustrated, hurt, anxious, stressed, and had all the negative emotions in my mind. I said to myself, why me? I needed this money very badly. You see, things are ultra competitive in an overpopulated country like India. Of course, I received free, unwanted advice of giving up, taking up an easier solution, and that my dreams are too big and too ambitious. Why are my dreams too big and ambitious? Is it because my parents did not belong to the elite class of doctors, professors, or engineers? Or is it rather because I'm a woman and only men in our society are allowed to dream big, do something big in their life? But I was determined.
passionate about chemical ecology. So I reapplied the second time. This time, something else happened. I was working in southwest of India in a place called Goa. And my university was in the east of India, in a city called Kolkata. My parents had to post me two letters of recommendation collected from my professors in Kolkata. So they collected these two letters of recommendation, put it inside another envelope, and posted it to Goa. I opened the envelope to take out the two sealed envelopes so that I can attach it with my other documents and post my fellowship application. But what I found, one of my letters of recommendation has been torn a bit. It's no more sealed. The deadline was approaching so I called my parents and they rushed to the university, explained the situation to my professor and the professor kindly agreed to give a copy of his letter. This time, the letter arrived safely. I found out that my father briefly went to the washroom before heading to the post office and he left the envelope containing the two sealed envelopes open on his desk. So one of my letters of recommendation was torn in that fraction of time, reflects a very colorful mind. Anyway, no one can stop you when you are determined. Few months later, I was called for the interview and something else again happened. The night before my interview, there was an earthquake in Delhi of 5.2 magnitude. I said to myself, oh God, I have come so far, I don't want to die without giving my interview. Luckily, nothing happened and my interview went well. Few months later, I received an email saying that I have been granted a 100% fellowship to do my entire PhD in Germany. I could not sleep that night. Overnight, I grew two wings a fellowship that had just 3% success rate in that year, and I was the only woman to get a 100% fellowship. Great, one hurdle crossed. Why shouldn't the next steps be easier? I was counting my days to come to Germany, and something else again happened. I see couples here. Yes, I fell in love. I met my partner before moving to Germany and we got separated by a long distance relationship of three years. Falling in love was destined. It was not in our hands. I cried almost every day I remember I used to have a calendar in my room and I used to cross each day. Felt as if I was in a prison. Somehow I survived, finished my PhD with a very good grade and rushed back to India to get married. This is a picture from our marriage. <laughs> very happy, I waited for this day for three years. While happily married and spending my time with my husband, 
I started applying for postdoctorate fellowships. I failed again. But finally, I got a good grant and came back to Geomar. We got separated again, but this time, the pain was a bit less. Unknowingly, I was becoming resilient and replacing negativity with more and more positive thoughts. Since I was married this time, of course, I received more unwanted advice and comments from neighbors and certain people around. They were more concerned about my long distance relationship than me and my husband and used to make sarcastic comments. But who cares? My life, my way. And my husband supported me. This is one of my favorite quotes from Winston Churchill. You will never reach your destination if you stop and throw stones at every dog that barks. And I followed Winston Churchill. A next phase in my life started when my husband moved to the UK. Trying to relocate myself to the UK was the next challenge. I remember I applied for three fellowships in one year, failed in two of them, and finally got a prestigious one and moved to the UK. A long distance relationship of six years finally came to an end. But it taught me resilience and to treasure our relation no matter what happens. Every time I failed, I saw something better was waiting for me. Like I got prestigious fellowships, research grants. I will fail again and again. But if I keep on trying, I will be successful one day. I realized that problems and difficulties will come, but we will figure out solutions somehow. I do not cry anymore. I am more tough now. I bounce back from bumps in the road as well as failures. You see, I have colored my mind with resilience. I believe a part of this resilience also came because of the profession I am in. In experimental science, you may fail almost every day. You repeat your experiments, you keep on trying, and one day you succeed. I remember out of three years of PhD, my first one and a half years was full of failed experiments and the later one and a half year were more successful. I think no other profession may come with so many failures as much as experimental science does. And in the process, you learn never ever to give up. Very interestingly, even nature has taught me resilience. Let me explain you how. I work with seaweeds. They are the plants of the sea. Or to be more specific, algae. They provide a lot of services to other organisms like food, shelter, and also humans from the food we eat 
to the oxygen we breathe. Now, among seaweeds, there are some very special ones called alien seaweeds. They're usually the tough ones. I will pick up my favorite, the red seaweed, Gracilaria vermiculophila, very scientific. Now, Gracilaria invaded Europe and US and it was also found in Kiel sometime around 2005. Now, immediately upon arriving of foreign territory, there was a boom. So it was found in dense mats almost everywhere along the Kiel Fjord. But whatever goes up must come down. In 2008, there was a pathogen attack. And Gracilaria almost disappeared from Kiel. But from 2012 onwards, it started reappearing again. So what me and my colleagues found through our work is that it has adapted its capacity to fight against enemies and reclaim its territory. So a seaweed that bounced back also taught me that resilience could be the key to success. Possibly, I see myself in Gracilaria, bounce back, do not be afraid of failures. We know hard work is the key to success. But I would add, if you want to be successful, just hard work may not do. Color your mind with resilience. Your never ever give up attitude is like your paintbrush. You can color any failure with resilience. Thank you very much.